Let's start with Kenneth. Kenneth's been doing some cool stuff with Particle for many years now, what, two, three years? Five no, no, years? Wow. Than. He was the first one I saw uh, who did something with the, the very early Particle boards. Yeah, the Spark Core stuff. So, I'm going to talk about Particle Mesh, so I'll let you take it off. Good evening, everyone. Uh, pardon me if I, I don't really look at you because uh, we have a very interesting setup today. I'll try <laughs> yes. to uh, manage that. So, uh, here to share a bit more about the third generation product that Particle has launched. So, for those who uh, have maybe heard about them, this is their newest product they have launched in somewhere in February this year. So, so some background. Uh, they actually acquired this company in China, in Shenzhen, called Great Bear Labs. Some of you might have heard of them. So essentially, they acquired a, a very strong team, very talented team in China. And in this particular, particular launch, they launched uh, seven products simultaneously. So instead of designing like one at a go, one at a time, they designed like seven bots at one go and shipped them all. So uh, maybe America can break a bit because I'm one of the few who have physical hardware already. People are still waiting for the shipping. So yeah, so yeah, looking at some really cool stuff. All right, so let's uh, really run through and have an idea of what Hunter Mesh offers. So, <coughs> so these are the three um, dev kits that they have. So on the left is the argon. So it's like a so so the Gen 3 products come with mesh by default. <coughs> and argon gives you mesh plus Wi-Fi. So boron is like mesh plus 3G or LTE. But it's not the LTE that we are familiar with, it's not the 4G kind of thing. It's really for the M2M uh, connectivity. So I'll talk about that more. So lastly we have the xenon as well, it's just mesh only. So it's like a <coughs> device that you use maybe for your door sensing, smoke sensor, or whatever. So you basically just get data from it and you don't need to act as a gateway. So I know Anand is gonna talk about uh, some of his struggles with MBLT, right? So during my early days of testing with the Boron in, in Singapore itself, uh, I managed to get Cat M1 and MBLT working. So oh, wow. if you don't want to struggle, <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes. Just like power on and put a new battery and uh, <laughs> Okay, so let's look at uh, okay. so this is uh, these are production ready kind of modules that they announced uh, somewhere in I like, think October. So basically what you get is like this kind of uh, PCI kind of form factor. And basically you place in your bots and you are good to go for production with uh, product therapy. This is coming, I think, somewhere in Q1. This you can install in the laptop, is it? You can try, like, yeah, just because... I think one of those... It's a... It's a... It's a... Actually, um, it's only USB, I think, to the LTE interface. I think it doesn't follow the same <coughs> definition. Yeah, but the form factor is the same. Yeah. But I, I don't have a lot of information about the the production modules. If I have them, I will share with you guys. Right, so these are some of the, oh yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm trying to share like eight months or 10 months worth of development goodies in 15 minutes, so I'll, I'll try my best to run through everything. So um, the first thing is that they use the Adafruit uh, feather uh, form factor. So essentially what it means is that you can go to the Adafruit uh, website today and buy any of the shoes that they have and you can get it working. So they also promise kind of like um, support for those shoes that are available. So that makes development much easier. And the mesh technology they are using is based on thread. <coughs> so thread might, might not be familiar for everyone, but everyone knows Google Nest, right? So Google Nest is kind of like a mesh uh, ecosystem for your house, but they took the protocol. So Google took the protocol, make it open source, and they call it open thread. And then Particle is the first in the world to take this protocol and try to make it into an industrial kind of uh, uh, use case because uh, Thread was designed for homes, but they're kind of like pushing the limit for it. So essentially, you get open source hardware, software as well. You can find the design for the Argon, Boron, and Xenon in their GitHub repo already. 
software is available as well. And yeah, it's pretty much the same if you play with a particle device before, it's pretty much the same power, you get the same experience. But the, the experience is not really the same for me because I went from RC 10 or 12 all the way to 25, and I spent like many nights resetting, rebooting, and so on. Yeah. So you guys are getting a lot of uh, improvements that we, we built on over the past few months. Alright, so I think enough said. If you want to uh, know more about the hardware, goodies, the specs, and everything, yeah, it's all there. Just uh, go to the website and check it out. I'll show you uh, there more. What's the availability in Singapore? I mean, yep. I mean, like the hardware? Yeah. Yeah, they're really shipping worldwide right now. It's just that they are, I think they're trying to ship over 10,000 different orders. It was on three orders. Yeah. So they did pre order, they are shipping right now by trying to move through all the orders. So it's probably going to take a while. So if you see here, this is a uh, Ethernet Better Wing. So this is the Xenon. So if you combine Xenon and Ethernet Better Wing, basically what you get is an Internet Gateway. So all the messages that send through the mesh goes through this guy goes through the Ethernet to the like particle cloud. So you get a Ethernet gateway. This is a add-on, so you get Wi-Fi with mesh. So you can act as a gateway as well. And this is uh, the Xenon. So what happens over here is that you can see the blue LED is blinking, right? So this is what the new uh, kind of, I guess, a function that they uh, introduced as part of the mesh offering. So it's called mesh publish and subscribe. So basically this, uh, thinking that you are seeing is that the gateway is sending to the Xenon and Xenon is sending back to the gateway, but nothing has to do with the cloud. There's, there's nothing going through the cloud and coming back. Everything is done kind of locally. So so last night I... Yeah. Which band is the mesh offering? Right, good question. So uh, it's running on 2.4 gigahertz right now. So basically it's the free band that you was using on the Wi-Fi. So yeah, so last night I, I tried to you know do something even... I, I tried to make a demo that is cooler by you know, if I turn, on the, turn off the Wi-Fi, the mesh, publish and subscribe, uh, start working and then things started going haywire. Yeah, so <laughs> I took one hour to try to reset back to what you see today. So, yeah, it's still very new. It's kind of uh, like rough on the edges, but yeah. I mean, over time with like OTA, you can actually get um, newer updates. So, all right. So for those who are familiar with Particle, they also provide you with a web ID as well. So you can go to a web browser, you don't have to install an OS and you can actually flash uh, code over the air uh, via a web browser. But what's even cooler is that recently in October, they launched this new product called Particle Workbench. So it's actually a uh, add-on, they are adding on to essentially uh, VS Code. So Microsoft VS Code. So they add their extensions and everything, and you essentially you get all the goodies like IntelliSense, and you can do all your stuff over the air interaction with the device via ID. So this is one of the uh, new software development tools, I guess, that they are introducing. So I'll just do a quick demo. So you can see right now the, the messages are, the LED is blinking alternatively, right? Every So currently it's every five seconds. So I'm just gonna try to demo OTA and hope that it works. I hope the demo bots are uh, with us today. So what, what I'm just going to do is that I'm going to change this to 1000 for every second. So the Xenon will send more often to the gateway and let's see if that really works. So if you are familiar with VS Code, you run a shortcut. If you do like target device. Nice. So I named I name the device basically Xenon. So I select that I want to flash to the Xenon. And all I have to do is do uh, nice. flash. Sweet. So you start to do the flash. And I, and I hope it works. So, so the other cool thing about this is that it supports local offline compilation as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. So you just do like an install and you do it all on its own. So which version of Visual Studio is this? It's the TA. It's VS Code. Code? Yeah. Kill me, Max. Doesn't look like it's <laughs> running. <laughs> Blasphemy. 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 Bl
Right, so I, I'm just doing like a signaling so I can see that. Oh, you can't, you can't really see but uh, yeah, it's actually... It's not the same, you know? <laughs> I think your video has stopped. Yeah, your yeah, video, video has stopped. stopped. Oh, you need to... oh yeah, no it. wonder I don't see any flashing. Because I'm seeing flashing there. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's faulty color. Your Pfizer has died. Must be the free. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry. Let's try again. Please. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Add in six seconds. You didn't click on the ad. Yeah, add. You gotta wait for the ad, man. <laughs> Skip ad. There's no ad. Uh, Donna, you're getting all this down, right? Yes. Okay. Oh. This, this is going to be great for uh, engineers at SG B roll. Yay! It's working, it's working. That's what you see is that like just uh, showing like a rainbow color sequence there for the scene. Just going to try flashing again. I think it might have been. Because I see it blinking more often. Yeah, it's blinking more often. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually you can see that actually the, the LED on the argon is blinking more rapidly than before. So the 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 up the firmware update is wirelessly okay, yeah. communicated. Yeah, um, let me just do a demo again just to okay. show that it's not hard coding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we trust you, man. Don't I'm just going to go 10 seconds here and say I'm going to do a flash. It could be just a video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so it, it pretty much takes like a few seconds. So essentially, it's going into the US server and it's coming back. I hope it works. Oh, so you are compiling As compiling through the, uh, through the cloud, then flash into the device. So it's, it's capable of actually? Yes. And entirely offline? Yes, entirely offline. So it's, you see the magenta light for those who are familiar right. and yeah. it's happy mix. So what is this? Green is flashing green. Right. So it's back online now. It's still it's the same. Yeah, exactly it's the right. same. Whatever you experienced from previous generation magenta hardware. Magenta is just downloading, green is flashing. Yeah, so you see that the, the LED on the Argon is blinking more slowly right now. So to prove that it's connected to the cloud, they have a new uh, feature as well, or rather a product. So they have this uh, node grid. Who's familiar with node grid? Node grid is like this visual kind of thing that you can uh, create, or your, you know, your logic in the cloud. So this is essentially taking whatever is published from the device and displaying it in real time. Not sure if it's real yet. So you can see a demonstration, you know, of the new tools that they have, and. Some of the cool stuff that you can build with some of the new software that they have um, provided the developers today. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, two more minutes. What else do I have? Oh, yeah. You know how far the bench can then um, that, that's a really tough question because everyone asks about range. But range is like a mixture of how much power you have, like your antenna gain, any kind of walls between. How about another country? Another country works. It works. Yeah. So I you can via the internet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can remotely update. Yeah, you can you can do all the remote stuff. Yeah. Of uh, using your tools, so yeah, this, uh, with like one and a half minutes left, I just wanted to share how how their new mobile app has before. So what you get is that you can actually have a mesh device setup, and what they are really doing is doing Bluetooth kind of um, setup process. So what you do is your phone would pair to the Bluetooth on the third generation device, and what. Particle has done is that uh, they ported embed TLS as part of, so they, they ported it to uh, like a mobile Android and iOS, so that they have encrypted encrypted communication even through Bluetooth. And one feature that they introduced is actually Bluetooth OTA. So because they are rushing for the firmware, right, and they didn't want to delay the shipping anymore. So essentially, what they did is they ship with a firmware that essentially allows DLE OTA to be performed. So the day that you unbox your device, 
the moment you connect over BLE, you get the latest OS wow. flash over BLE. Yeah, so so many people ask me like, what? Oh, why is it only on mobile? Actually, they have they have it on uh, like machines as well, like Linux, Mac OS, but there's no one reliable kind of uh, software that they found. Is the two point four radio is it like a custom non eight hundred two eleven radio, or is it like a software you can buy kind of? Radio? No, I think it's a eight hundred two fifteen. Basically, a standard. So it cannot do the regular Wi-Fi, right? No, it doesn't do the regular Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. But is it because it's in hardware? Yes, yeah, in hardware. Also, oh, it's not Wi-Fi based. No, it's not Wi-Fi based. So none of these particles are Wi-Fi based. No, so the, 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 band, the argon is yeah, it's just the same band, band, just that the hardware is different. It's right. not the Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's like Bluetooth mm. and Wi-Fi. Argon has, band, but, but argon has normal Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, so argon has, uh, argon is kind of complex. It has two um, processors. So there's actually an ESP32 oh. that provides the Wi-Fi. Okay. Then so mesh comes from actually Nordic NRF. So that's the access point, is it, to yeah. the internet? Yeah, it's like you have these very powerful things sitting there just waiting for software updates. Mm. Unlock like, more potential. Yep, I guess we are out of time.